Hello there and welcome back to another video here on Wristwatch Revival. My name is Marshall and today we are going over all the tools you'll need to service a watch movement. A quick note, when shopping for watchmaking tools, you'll often find yourself facing down two broad options. One option is the high quality stuff from Switzerland, from companies like Bergeon and Horatech, and the other are generic low quality tools, mostly from China, that cost as little as one tenth the price, so it can be tempting to go that direction as a beginner. But it's often not a good choice, and as we go through the tools today, I'll tell you when you can get away with the generic version and when you can't. So let's get into the basics. The three most fundamental tools you'll need to take apart a watch movement are screwdrivers, tweezers, and some form of magnification. These tools will allow you to take apart a watch movement if your goal is to dip your toe into the watchmaking pool to see what a movement looks like inside or to just try the hobby out. A set of screwdrivers contains screwdrivers uh, with sizes ranging from about half a millimeter up to two and a half millimeters. The generic versions will be of very low quality and they will cost about $5. If you just wanna try things out, they will do in the short term, however. But if you wanna try things out with the nicer screwdrivers but don't wanna spring for the full set, you could probably get away with three screwdrivers. Think small, medium, and large. The small one, about 0.8 millimeters the medium 1.2 millimeters, and the large two millimeters, which should cost about $12 each, but mostly you'll wanna get a set of nine or 12 so that you can have all your bases covered. The set of nine that I use are from Bergeon and they were about $120. One big advantage of these nice screwdrivers is that the blades are replaceable so that you can basically use them for a lifetime. For tweezers, you'll need one pair to start with. I recommend a number two or number three as they are good for all purpose use. The higher the number, the finer the points on the tweezers and they go down to double zero, which are quite beefy. Most tweezers that you'll find are stainless steel, but of course there are also dozens of specialist tweezers that you can explore further down the line. Things like tweezers that are special to picking up hands or brass tweezers or titanium tweezers that are anti-magnetic. There's a whole lot to choose from, but for now you can stick with one. I would go with a number two tweezer. Good Dumont tweezers are about $35. The generic ones, well, they're about three bucks. Now there is a huge difference in quality here, uh, but the cheap ones will definitely let you pick up small objects for a while, they'll just wear out quickly. The third essential tool is some kind of magnification. Watches are too small to work on reliably with the naked eye as you won't be able to see patterns of wear, proper oil placement, pivot alignment, etc. The most common and cheapest method of magnification is the loop. Most people get two of them, a regular magnification and a higher magnification. I recommend a loop that magnifies at about four times for your regular magnification and one that's 10 times for your higher magnification. There are other options for magnification like a visor or a magnifying glass or even a microscope, but a loop is a great option as it's the best combination of function and price. As a beginner, you can just get the four times loop. The one I have was about $39 from Horatech. And then I also have the Bergeon higher magnification one, which is about 10X and it was $22. But generic loops are very cheap at about $3 and they'll do if you're just dipping your toe in the pool. So these three basic tools will let you take apart most watch movements and do most of the work to getting it back together even. These will let you experiment around and try your hand at the hobby to see if it suits you. If you go all generic, you'll have spent about $11 to get the tools to take the watch apart. Now, if you find that you're enjoying the hobby and wanna take it a bigger step towards actually servicing the watch movement, which by the way means taking the movement apart, cleaning it, then reassembling it and lubricating it, you'll need actually quite a bit more, which we'll cover now. In order to hold the movement while you work on it and keep it steady, you'll need a movement holder. The Bergeon 4040 and 4040P are kind of the industry standard used by many watchmakers. The 4040 is the metal version and the 4040P is the plastic version. They are reversible so that they can take many different sizes of movement and they cost about $27 and they're well worth it. 
However, generic ones will cost you about eight bucks and they work okay. I still recommend the Bergeon ones though. You'll also wanna get a casing cushion to lay the movement on while you're casing it, putting on the hands, or just need to set it down for a minute. They come in a few varieties like leather and gel cushion, but most any will do. A nice Bergeon one will go for somewhere between $29 and $36, and the generic ones are about nine bucks. This is a good place to get the generic one if you're on a budget, as all they're really doing is providing a, a soft place to, to set down the movement. As you work on the movement, you'll need a tray to keep the parts together, as well as a cover to keep the dust off of it. Bergeon makes high quality ones for $19, but you can definitely just get the generic one here for five bucks, as they do exactly the same job. You'll also want a good work surface to work on, and a work mat is just what you need. They come in three colors, black, white, and this special green color, which is said to be easiest on the eyes over long periods of time. I don't know if that's just marketing nonsense, but it's become the default for watchmaking for whatever reason. You can get nice ones with adhesive backs from Bergeon for $39, but it's fine to go generic here for five to $10, but they probably won't last as long. Next, you'll need a way to get the hands off of the watch. There are two main ways to do this hand levers, or a Presto tool. Hand levers are my preferred way. You can get a variety of high quality ones from Bergeon or Horatech for about $57, or generic ones for $15. I would go for the Bergeon ones if you can afford it, as you really don't want to scratch the dial of your watch. The other popular method is using a Presto tool, which is a special tool actually originally made by Bergeon, but it is widely copied. They are very quick and quite effective at removing hands, though they don't offer the same level of control as the levers do. The real Bergeon ones are about $58 and the generic ones are about $12. The generic will work, but they won't last very long in my experience and they're not very well made. Now, in order to refit the hands to the dial, uh, you'll need something like this. This is a Bergeon hand fitting tool. It has two different ends on it, uh, a wider opening and a smaller one. There's actually three different versions of this tool, each with two different openings. Cool part about this is that the tips are actually replaceable. So if they wear out, you can put in new ones. You can also pick up generic versions of these for about seven bucks. And these ones are about 22. You'll need some peg wood for various uses like cleaning, scraping, manipulating, holding things. This is just shaped pieces of wood. You uh, then use like a knife to make it in the shape that you want. It's very handy and it's about five bucks. Now, in order to clean the watch movement, you'll want a watch cleaning machine, but those are out of scope for this video as they're very expensive and kind of a specialty item. However, you can effectively clean a watch movement at home with an ultrasonic cleaner, though it does take a lot longer to do so. Ultrasonic cleaners are also useful for cleaning cases, bracelets, and your tools as well. Thankfully, ultrasonic cleaners are widely available for a reasonable price. While the professional ones will run you from say $700 to $1,200, you can get a generic one from Amazon for about 88 bucks or even a small one for $35. I have one of the Amazon ones and I've had great results with it for a long time. To hold the small parts while they're being cleaned in the ultrasonic cleaner, some cleaning baskets are useful. The Bergeon ones are expensive, but very high quality. The cost is about $37 per cleaning basket. If those are out of range, however, you can get low quality brass ones for about $6. You'll also need some consumables to clean the watch movement, things like isopropyl alcohol and lighter fluid, but those are relatively inexpensive and you can figure those out at the local grocery store. Now, Rodico is a kind of putty that doesn't leave uh, residue on things. And it's used for all kinds of things from cleaning to holding, to picking up parts, to wiping excess oil away. It's extremely handy stuff. And thankfully it's only about five bucks. There are a lot of ways to get the case back off of the watch, uh, up to like a $700 case back opener from Bergeon. But for most of them, you'll want to use a rubber ball or a JAXA tool. I highly recommend the rubber ball as it's inexpensive. They cost six to $9 and will open up a lot of the watch cases that you come across. If that doesn't work, the JAXA tool is a handheld tool for opening tougher cases. And the Bergeon runs for about $180, with the generic one coming in at about $12.
The generic one won't last long, but it will do the trick in the short term. Another tool that you'll need to get into certain case backs, uh, basically the ones with snap-on backs, is a case knife. This one was made by Bergeon. It uh, was about $30, maybe 28 bucks, something like that. And it's a simple, well-made tool. Basically, it's just a flat blade that you use to pry open the back of the case. In order to properly handle the movement after it's been cleaned, you'll want some gloves or finger cots. Cots are the industry standard and they cost from say five to $15 depending on the material and the brand. You can get whatever's comfortable for you. Next, you'll need an air blower to dry off the parts and to make sure that there isn't any dust under the crystal or on the dial before you recase the watch. These are simple devices that range from $34 for the high-end Bergeon ones to five bucks for the generic. You can definitely get away with the generic one here. If you don't have one already, you'll want a spring bar tool to take the watch band or the bracelet off. Bergeon offers two, one in metal, one in plastic, and they're $18, and they also feature replaceable tips, so basically the tool will last you your lifetime. Or you can get a generic one for about four bucks that probably won't last very long. Okay, in order to lubricate the watch after it's been cleaned, you'll need three things. You'll need oil, you'll need a place to keep the oil, and you'll need a way to apply the oil. As for the oil, you'll need four types to properly lubricate the watch. You'll need Mobius 9010, which is about $30 for light viscosity applications like the train wheels. You'll need Mobius D5 or Mobius HP 1300. The D5 is $48, the 1300 is $30, though those are different sizes. Uh, the HP 1300 is a much, much smaller, so it's actually more expensive. Uh, th those are used for medium viscosity applications. And you'll want Mobius 9501, which is $70, or Molly Coat DX, which is about $13. These are grease that you can use for heavy viscosity applications. The last you'll need is Mobius 9415, which is about $39 for the palette jewels. Nobody ever said watchmaking was cheap. As you can see, even if you go... With the less expensive option, you're looking at about $100 just for the lubricants to do the basic oiling on a watch. Now, to keep the oil clean and accessible, you'll need an oil cup, which you can get a full setup for about $150 from Bergeon, or a really nice knockoff for about $42, which is what I use, or you can even use single plastic cups for about four bucks. Any of these options will be fine. And lastly, you'll need the oilers to apply them. The really nice Bergeon ergonomic ones are about $35, and the regular Bergeon ones are about $4. Either will work, I've used both, but the ergonomic ones are actually better in my experience. Still, as a beginner, you gotta go for the $4 ones. So, that's it. These are the most basic tools that you'll need to do a full service of the watch movement. Now, as you might imagine, there are many many other tools that you can get to help make this process easier or more efficient. And of course, that will open up all types of different repairs and uh, things that you can address going forward. But if you're looking to take your very first steps into the hobby, you can get those first three tools that I mentioned at the top. And then if you really want to dive in and see if you can service a watch movement, this is what you're going to need for the bare bones basics. And then you can start building out the other types of tools that you'll want as you go. As always, I want to say thank you so much for taking the time to watch my video and hang out with me. I also want to thank my patrons who helped make this video possible. Kelsey, Stan, Dustin, Brinton, Adam, Caleb, Russell, James, Samuel, Tony, Max, Mitchell, Adrian, Drew, Kyle, Jake, Erica, Trevor, and Robert. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. If you're interested in doing so and getting some cool perks as you go along, you can check out patreon.com slash wristwatchrevival. And with that, we'll see you next time.